Hey guys, what's happening? So, in my restoration of my Craftsman, let's say I'm making a video series about that thing. Um, I'm not going to do a chuck part of that series, but I wanted to clean this thing up. This is like a American made um, Hinton machine, DE Hinton. Uh, or Hilton or Hinton or something like that. I'll, I'll put the right name down. I'd already looked up before. You know, it's obviously made in the USA. Um, yeah, somewhere back east. I mean, I said I already looked it up already. So, I've used Evaporus in the past to clean stuff up. And I think I've used it once or twice. And, I mean, it works good. Um, but it's a lot cheaper to use vinegar. And I've used vinegar a lot to clean, you know, shell casings and all kinds of stuff over the years, you know. And I would say, I mean, it works about the same as far as I can tell. Not that too much of a difference, but... Alright, so, yeah, I'd like to be able to restore this truck right there. Right now it's really hard to turn it and grab the key. I mean, there's a lot of slop in this thing, so I don't know if this thing's worth... I mean, yeah, I don't know. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart. And then I'm going to try to get as much oil and grease off as I can with, uh, like, an uh, oven cleaner. And then, once I get as much of this grease and junk off there, then I'm going to dip it in uh, vinegar. And we'll um, let it sit there for a day or so, and we'll see the results. So before I okay. take these, the chuck apart, I want to make sure I label these things, or just look at the number. There is actually individual numbers on them. I can't tell if that's a three. Yeah, it looks like a three. So three, two... One, so one is, I mean, even if I have to go back to this video and make a reference of it. But, okay, so one is down here at the very bottom. So one, even for my future reference, <laughs> one is down here. Here's the label, one is down here. Alright, so this looks like it's a 5 sixteenths Allen, but those things are in there, though. Um, so I have to hit it off camera here. Yeah, I'm guessing this thing is really old. Um, I mean, the lathe is probably 60, 70 years old. 50s, 60s, I think. Um, but it looks like these are socket cap head screws turned down. All right, so i got to get this part here. Um, let me get some um, WD-40 in there. This thing's really stuck on there. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to use some soft, soft metal. See if I can maybe tap it back. Um, I mean, this I mean, obviously we have to separate because there's no other way to get it from the front. I, I've seen some chucks where they're bolted in the front. So, at least my other one, my, uh, my buck chuck is like that. Alright, so a little finesse and pounding. Looks like there's, there's some chips in there. I don't know, there's a lot of chips. Um, here, it's probably that big of a deal, but you, you mean, if you have too many chips packed in, it's not going to sit flush. Alright, looks like just a couple screws. I'm guessing that's... I'll just I'll have to look and see how this thing operates. I wonder if I can find a manual for this thing. Um, Alright, so let's just see if this back plate comes off here. Okay, so the screws do need to come out because that thing is it's holding those things in. I'm surprised... Well, I guess it's not spring-loaded. I thought it would be spring-loaded. So I guess it just holds those in. It locks this thing into place. This little looks like collar. You guys have okay. these chucks. Um, I'm just like I said, I'm using my copper bar, not to screw up those uh, the face there of the scroll thing right there. And I'm just pounding this back, but it's a really tightly machined thing that's popping out the center here. I'm just lubricating with WD-40 as I go. All right, so there it is. And you can see the detent thing kind of jacked up right there. But uh, that wasn't me, it was already like that. Um, here's the scroll, you can just see fill the grease and chips. Alright, so I'm going to take this out and... This, uh, I said, I'll probably clean by hand. Um, well, I guess I can take these out. These, these I'll clean by hand, the gears. Looks like I don't want a vinegar bath. So I degreased it earlier. I mean, I could probably just, honestly, I could just brush this all off, but I'd give the vinegar a try. You know, getting all the cracks I can't get into. 
All right, so we have a little salt, salt and vinegar. That yeah, wow, salt. That's really good right there. I'm just gonna stir the salt up. Let it kind of get in there. Now, get as many parts as I can in this bin. I might have to do two different cycles, one for each part here. I'm gonna let this sit overnight. Just to cover it. I have a lid for this one too. Okay. Yeah, these aren't really scaly rust, so this will probably help it go pretty fast. I've done this before, you know, this is kind of before they had evapor rust. This is kind of what people used. All right, so I think I'll be back in a couple hours. If not, then I'll be back tomorrow. Have it covered. And I guess we'll see. All right, so this has been sitting for about 12 hours overnight. Interesting, you can see the little foam bubbles on it. Alright. Yeah, look at that. You can see like a little reaction. See the fizzling? Yeah, it's, I guess that's a lot more. I didn't see that when I, obviously, when I first put it in there. Let's see. Let me flip these around a little bit. You're not going to. Um, is you're not going to see the rust come off until you scrape it. Yeah, you can just see the rust come right off. All right, so I'm going to take this over to my sink. Yeah, you can just see the rust coming off right there, just with the screwdriver. Now it's so much cleaner now. I put it in for a couple more hours, even though I got pretty much everything. This is actually a pretty heavy pity in the back. You can see that. But it's actually D.E. Winton. W-H-I-T-N. That's a part number. Code G L A R S S B. All right, so I put this in for another hour or so. Maybe hour and a half. Mm, I think it's about as good as it's good. I don't see any rest anywhere. So, take this back over to the sink and I'm going to put the other parts in. So, the, the actual. Uh, the spiral part was actually not even rusty at all, and uh, so I just degreased it. Yeah, it looks good. Even inside here, it's all rust free. All right, I'm gonna wash this off and I'll put the other parts in. I put the last two pieces in, and this actually, this piece right here is actually inside the chuck. So look how rusty that thing is. That's actually inside the chuck, so I'm kind of surprised. <clears throat> yeah, the scroll thing actually fits on top of that thing right there. And that actually is the back of the, the truck. So I had to put some more parts in there. You can see like, it's bubbling right around where the rust is. Yeah. Alright, so it's been soaking in WD-40 for a couple days. This actually part took the longest. I mean, this took days to get all the rust off. And still not 100%. I mean, yeah, I don't know, it's pretty good, but yeah, that one took days. But the rest of the stuff came off in a day overnight. So, all right, so I'm going to put this back out here. Make sure these are clean. Yeah, it's soaking in WD 40. Uh, all right, get that going. I know, I know there's a lot of debate online about using grease or oil. What I use is I use a non detergent air compressor oil, synthetic 30 weight oil. So, it's non detergent, so it doesn't actually uh, suspend the dirt particles. So like in a motor, in a car engine, uh, motor oil will basically, detergent oil will actually hold on to the actual particles and send them back to the oil filter. So it tries to hold on to the, the, the grit and the, the particulate and sends it back to the filter, right? Whereas there is no oil filter here. So what I want to do is basically get these things to go out the, the sides. I don't want it to suspend an oil. I want it to get out of the oil. All right, so that's 30 weight oil. That in there. I guess it's all sewed up in there. This thing's already sort of soaking already with um, because of all the uh, WD-40. So, yeah, I'll see. It's probably gonna fling everywhere when I first fire this up. And then some people actually use grease. I mean, on the on the on the gears back here. 
uh, on opinion, I think they're opinions. Um, some people use oil, some people use grease. I think we're just going to use oil because the, the tolerances aren't great, and I actually found a lot of particles back in here. So, um, all right, so I'm, I'm just going to put these back in there, you know, and lock them in place, put the locks on there. But I'm not going to use uh, grease. I, I mean, I, I, I t it's tempting because I want to use grease, you know. But at the same time, man, I don't, I don't want to. I want. I don't want chips to stick to it. All right, so I'm not sure why they did that, but see how these things are offset. One is tighter to the edge than the other. Well, that goes on the outside. I think the, the guy that originally had this made this mistake over here and you couldn't figure it out and enlarged in the hole. Whereas then he, I think he figured it out over here and okay, well then it needs to be reversed. I, was, I couldn't figure out why the hole was enlarged in there, but now it makes sense. So go back. Before when it was rusty, I couldn't even see it. It said one, two, and three on it, or one, two, and three. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't even see that before. So um, I actually originally thought one was down here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get this back in place here and start off with one. That's where it starts. Okay, that's where it ends on here. It all came back together towards the center. Flip this over, and we'll get the back plate on. Yeah, well, everything was actually already marked already. I didn't have to even touch anything. Like the last person that took this apart actually made all the correct marks that were you know, like here, the slide mark, they're all numbered, and this was double dotted to match right there. Yeah, you want to make sure this is correct because that way it's concentric. If you if you normally you'd, you'd cut the back plate to the to the truck, and if it's not in the back in the same order, it could be. A, not concentric or not true. There it is on the lathe restoration. Perhaps my Atlas. Other videos I'm doing. Alright, huge difference in how rusty it was before. Packed with chips. Yeah, so it's a D E Witten. Witten. Not Winton with an N. Witten. Um, yeah, I can't even find information. I don't think the company is still in business anymore, but. Yeah, this is probably at least, I mean, 50s, I don't know, pretty old. I'm thinking this, this lathe is from the 50s.